my eldest lad got to a certain age where, right, he's 11 now, coming up 12, he's ready for youth clubs, so I inquired with the local council as to what youth clubs are still in operation and where could I send him, and it turns out they're all shut, and uh, as the, the day went by, that started to eat away at me and annoy me more and more, and eventually I sort of committed, unfortunately, on social media, on Facebook, to the world that I was going to open a new youth club within a year. Yeah, I had a conversation with Anthony, we then arranged to meet up, Anthony told me about what his um, his aim was uh, and it was something that really appealed to me because you know one of our priorities within the organisation is em empowering communities. You can have the best idea in the world without some kind of uh, liquidity and capital in the bank to, to buy the basics and uh, you know to buy the table tennis tables and stock out the tuck shop and buy posh uniforms and get some branding made. You need some kind of working capital just to get it off the ground uh, and Peaks and Plains uh, were instrumental in that. In a nutshell, without them we'd have no money, no idea how to operate it and no building. One of the first things we established um, when we set up was obviously we've got our own committee but we've also got a couple of uh, young people if you like form um, a bit of a youth council and they act as the conduit between us and the floor if you like so we don't buy anything without their approval we don't get anybody in to come and do a guest activity without their approval so without a doubt um, as much as peaks and plains are important strategically to help the place run the young people themselves uh, literally guide and dictate what we do each night. And we try and mix it up, be as creative as possible. So it could be arts, it could be dance, it could be music, um, sports. We've had the RFU in, we've had graffiti workshops, you name it, we're trying it. It allows us to meet and um, meet informally with um, a group that, you know, has in the past historically been difficult to engage with. Um, I think because of the value that they get from the youth club, they are able to see that, you know, you, you can make a difference um, and you, you are encouraged to give your views and we will listen to them. The major part I'm interested in is the bespoke packages that Peaks and Plains and iMac offer in the very fact that they support young people, the most vulnerable young people in society, in building up their genetic employability uh, to help them uh, find employment, to help, you know, to help them look for, sustain and obtain uh, employment with a particular emphasis on the skills, attributes and qualities required by employees. At the youth club it's for um, people 16 and year 6 it's to have fun. They've done graffiti competitions, like so you'd write your name or something, and we're having Halloween competition posters. If I wasn't here, I'd probably be sat in my room on my own, being bored. We've got 170 members, and on a good night, we'll get 85 young people coming in. I can show you emails from parents, how they've seen a difference in confidence levels, maybe in their son, children losing weight because they're a lot more active than they were. And you can speak to the local PCSOs and the local uh, police officer and he'll show you the stats, he'll show you the graphs and it shows quite clearly on the nights that we're open um, calls into uh, the police regarding antisocial noise, antisocial behaviour, whatever it may be, drop on a Monday and a Thursday night and the, the only thing you can contribute that to is IMAP. And I think by the ideas that the, the group of volunteers have, and certainly by encouraging the young people to influence what they do, um, I think that's unique in, in its own right, really. And again, by the imagination and the creativity of the young people involved, then in a way that has allowed the iMac to achieve the massive success that it has done in, in no time at all.